safety in the coronavirus world. How do you feel like Canada, Justin Trudeau, and like I said, just Canada in general is doing as far as battling the virus? Personal opinion. I think, I think, uh, it, you know, I really gravitate back and forth to thinking we've done a good job. And then, you know, you're looking at our numbers now here, especially in Quebec and in Montreal, they're not good. Uh, we definitely don't have it under control. Um, but I, I'll, I'll tell you one thing, some, and some of the policies are contradictory. Like, so for example, you know, we, we're we told now we can't get together for Christmas or the holidays uh, and we can't gather. Yet the malls are open, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, restaurants are closed, but, um, you know, the, the, the SAQ, which is where you get your alcohol, that's open. You know, and, and the reasons for that is, of course, the revenue and the taxes go to the government. So they don't care if, if, if we, we have to deprive ourselves of seeing our families for Christmas. But God forbid you would close the alcohol uh, distributor, you know. So there's a lot of that contradictory stuff that's mm -hmm. kind of frustrating and you wish they would, they would kind of like uh, be consistent. Yes. But you know what? Uh, you're talking about income. The, the, the. Canadian government gives me $500 a week, yeah. you know, and, and it's not enough to, uh, you know, live a player life, a hustler life, but you know what? I pay my rent and uh, I eat and everything else is just gravy that comes in. You have health care. So we have health care. I never had, listen, I tore my ACL last year. You know, I, 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 I sometimes I, I'll get into, I try to avoid it, but you know, I, I posted something about like somebody wrote something on one of these baseball because I love interacting with people on these mm -hmm. baseball Facebook pages and sometimes it gets ugly for absolutely no reason and it was something about Jackie Robinson and I said something about you know Jackie was here in Montreal it's a big part of our history we love Jackie and uh, some idiot came on and being like uh, why don't you go back to your socialist country or something like that and and you know I I, I unfortunately engaged with this person but I remember saying to them, you know, like I tore my ACL and my meniscus playing baseball last year. You know how much money it cost me? Zero dollars. I had a brace. I had a surgery. I, I had physio. It didn't cost me a penny. And, and sure, there's problems. I'm not talking, we're not the greatest country in the world in terms of how our healthcare is run. There's a lot of flaws. There's a lot of waiting lists. People are probably suffering more than they have to because of the waiting list. But I bet you ask one Canadian it, there's not one Canadian who would give that up, you know, who would give up their free health care uh, because of the problems, you know? Well, the, we have a coronavirus crisis and people are afraid to go to the doctor because they're worried about paying a hospital, hospital bill of a million dollars or more. So I laugh when we hear about these waiting lists and, yeah. oh, it's socialist and they're coming to get you and stuff. I'm down with it. I'm totally 100% behind it. We support a system here of, you know, people that I'm for, such as Bernie Sanders, if you've heard of him, uh, for Medicare for all, a uh, single payer system in the, you know, something like Medicare in this country, something like the Canadian healthcare system, because you know what, it's a hell of a lot better. We pay tons of money for healthcare in this country and we get crap service and people are dying. People are committing suicide because of medical debt in this country. We can't get $600 a week or $500 a week in this country because we have politicians that are total jokes here. Meanwhile, people, again, they're killing themselves. They're uh, dying because they have no money. They're losing their houses. There's going to be an eviction crisis coming up here soon. It, it's, it's unfathomable to me. And as, as, one, as a person who spent a lot of time in the U.S., I've spent yeah. a lot of time in L.A. And uh, it's funny, when I said I spent a lot of time in L.A. and New York to this person, the, that person said, well, that's not America. And I said, <laughs> okay. I, I, I see where this is going, you know. So uh, my, my opinion was completely uh, invalid. But uh, it, it's, I, I, and, I, and I love the U.S. so much, and I, I, yeah. I, I, I wish I could live there. But then oftentimes I say to myself, do I really want to give up the, the privileges that I have as a Canadian where, like I say, break it down. You want to talk about the, the question, which was how do I think that the government is handling it? Yes, they've made mistakes. But in perspective, I get $500 a week. I don't have to worry about paying my rent. And like you were saying, I don't have to worry about getting sick because I know that, you know, 
the, the problem is, is the over flooding of the hospitals now. But if you take that out in a vacuum, I wouldn't be worried about getting sick because I know I just experienced it. I just experienced going through a really bad injury and uh, not having to worry about my pocketbook being hit. And I wouldn't give that up for anything. I do want to ask you, what would you say to somebody like that that is so fixated on these labels of socialist, communism? My thing is they don't even know what the hell those words mean. That's just code words uh, for some rhetoric some rich person on TV said to them. Uh, so what would you say to those people about Canada? I know you said about the 500, but uh, that they're bringing up these fake words to say that Canada is so bad. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I think, I think like a lot of ideas, it's like when you talk to conspiracy theorists about, you know, COVID or, or things like that. And you're just like, it's, it's clear that whatever narrative that they've been following, um, they're, they're trying really hard to stick to that. And, 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 you know, it's, you know, it's a whole deep conversation about identity politics. And I deal with a lot of it on my new record that, I, that I've been working on. And it's this idea that, you know, you can't be a full person unless you have aligned yourself with either a political party, um, a, a political stance, a, a, a sort of lifestyle, um, and you block yourself off from everything and live in this bubble and, and you defend yourself with uh, basically fake, the things that you read online that have no evidence behind them, um, ideas that your parents or your favorite politician or uh, some, your, your pastor or whoever has fed into your brain, you said, I cannot, I have to shut everything out because I want to stay in this bubble. I want to be part of this. And, and it's, it's pretty much as old as the world. People are just afraid of change. Um, and and, and it's, it's really hard for people to accept. You know, I, I, quickly, I always yeah. look at these things. My favorite show is Mad Men. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the best shows ever made. And re-watching it recently, I realized what the show is about. What the show is about is, you know how people always say, you see these memes going around and people are like, uh, oh, in the 50s, back when I was growing up, we used to play outside and we would take a swig of beer and, uh, and when we were five years old and, and we were tough back then. You know, we weren't babies like the, the, the modern uh, uh, kids. You know, well, Mad Men is a show about how that's a bunch of crap. You know, and, and you see things like kids not wearing their seatbelts and, you know, people polluting and, and they, they stress that. And it's to demystify uh, what this kind of human uh, need to be like the old ways were the good ways, you know, and these new things that people are trying to shove down our throats. This is bad. We need to stick with the old ways. Make America great again. Yeah. Mad Men is the anti make America great again, because it shows you how people were back then, and you wouldn't want those people in your life now, you know? And, and no, I agree. And I, and I, and I think that's the, that's the biggest problem, is people are stuck on old ideas, and they, it reminds them of where they grew up, and they don't realize that sometimes where you grow up isn't the best place, you know? Change. And I agree. And future generations. And every civilized country in the world has health care for all, but we can't seem to get it in this country because of the politicians are sold out to the health insurance companies and the people that make the medication that we can't have also a drug prices that are fair for everybody. So that's the problem in the country is money. And mm -hmm. until we get rid of those political uh, contributions from drug yeah, companies, fossil fuel companies, then uh, the same uh, problem will exist on and on. So another, another quickly, another big difference between Canada and, and the U.S. is we have a cap on how much, uh, you know, corporations and private uh, companies can donate to our politicians. So uh, it takes away the incentives to uh, to support those corporations when politicians know it doesn't matter because we're not get, getting a certain amount of money. And I think, again, maybe that's socialist to these people, uh, but it kind of makes pretty, uh, makes a lot of sense. I think a lot of things would change if the lobbying was cut back significantly. Right. Let's end it there. Again, if you want to find Anakin, Anakin Slade on YouTube, it's, and you can spell it out. I think it's A-N-N-I-K-A-N-S-L. Uh, you flip the A and the I. So it's A double N A K I N. So like Anakin S L A Y D Slade. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all those things. Easy to find, easy to interact with. 
new album coming out uh, hopefully in the new year. Um, and um, yeah, you can see all my stuff, all my sports-based stuff, which is really what got me popping, which we actually didn't talk about, but uh, it, they, they sort of speak for themselves anyway. So uh, well, you do have that Montreal Expos hit and it's got quite a few views yeah. on there. We'll just say that. So definitely check that out. I know we talked a little bit about it in the last podcast, but definitely check it out. I'm going to put a link to that. I may even try to play a little bit at the end. I mean, during the interview rather. So definitely check it out. So Anakin, thanks so much. I appreciate your time. Rob, anytime, man. It was a lot of fun. We'll do this again.